morning. It is Tuesday, July 17. And I have just arrived back here in lovely New York. Lovely green, slightly too hot, where the trees survive New York. From a weekend of traveling around down to Washington, D.C. to play the weekend with uh, Sandy Bynum in her uh, cabaret act, along with Lanny Myers. Very successful little run down there. Then we went off to, then I went, went to Washington National Airport, Reagan they call it, and uh, took my little base and me at 5 o'clock in the morning and flew out to Chicago. And the travails of that were, it was difficult. It wasn't easy. Schlepping the base, the little uh, base around. I decided that's probably the last time I'm ever going to carry a base on a trip, if I can help it. I will rent, I'd rather rent anything than carry a base and go through that. We did have a, uh, a beautiful concert with um, Barbara Cook in Ravinia with the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. And uh, it, was, it was a beautiful concert. It was out there with Warren Oates, Steve Kenyon, Ted Rosenthal and myself, and the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. But the guys in the band are really about as wonderful as you can deal with in this world. They're uh, serious artists, serious musicians, and serious people. And uh, great fun to hang out with, and great fun to play music with. They're wonderful musicians. So, uh, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was work, don't get me wrong. It was work, but it worked out well. I don't know if you could see that boat going through or not. Anyway, um, came back, flew into town last night. Was it last night or was it Sunday? It was Sunday. No, it was yesterday. It was yesterday, Monday, the 16th. That woman, I've known her for almost 25, 30 years. She's worked in the parks here in Riverside Park for at least 35 years, 30 years. And I've watched her age, like some others I know. And she's just taken meticulous care of this park and it is so beautiful as a result of her hard work. And there she is cleaning her weed whacker. I have a weed whacker out in Hope, and I know how hopelessly caught up they get. Talking about uh, Jeremy Lin leaving the mix, I'm not sure how far I got before I pressed some button on the camera and then everything stopped. But I'm not the world's greatest cameraman. I know you're in shock to hear that, but I'm not. So anyway, Jeremy Lin is leaving, will probably leave the Knicks. The Knicks probably no, didn't make enough any, an offer big enough for him. But I'm saying, trying to line up with it because it's signed. And I suspect he doesn't really want to be with the Knicks because I don't think he likes playing with Carmelo Anthony, whose motto of give me the ball, let me shoot, give me the ball, let me shoot, give me the ball, watch me shoot, give me the ball, oops, missed, give me the ball, oops, missed, taking a thousand shots a game. Uh, Steve Novak, their three-point shooter, I mean, he shot such a high percentage that he just give him the ball all the time. Let him just shoot a three-pointer before anybody does anything. And then uh, uh, let him shoot. Let him give him the ball. Let him shoot. Uh, and then hope for the rebound. It's really a great way to play. You don't have to do anything. Just give the ball to Steve Novak. Set him in the three-point line. Shoot it. They miss it. Uh, get, get the rebound half the time or some of the time and, and do it again. Anyway, I mean, no more layups, none of that stuff. Well, maybe a Carmelo, gets, Carmelo gets a jump shot occasionally, but uh, let Steve Novak play it all the time. Uh, and Jeremy Lin will be gone. 
It's too bad because he plays great basketball. He's an exciting player, and he absolutely rejuvenated the Knicks. And that's too bad because he absolutely rejuvenated the Knicks this year. But uh, the Knicks, uh, they're, they're, uh, their whole hierarchy, the president, uh, the people who own them, I, I don't get the feeling that they're really uh, so, so savvy about all this. And, uh, you know, they're just making money, and they're making a lot of money. And they kind of signed Carmelo and Anthony, what's his name, Amari Stoudemire, who, who is a much more soulful player. But uh, they should have, they should have kept uh, Jeremy Lin. I mean, they've got this wonderful Tyson Chandler in the, in the uh, playing defense in the center. And getting rid of Lynn really is a mistake. It's really a mistake. But then I'm sure that Carmelo wanted Lynn to go. You know, Carmelo didn't like playing that kind of basketball. Carmelo wants to play Carmelo ball. And so the Knicks will be a dreary, mediocre team again this year, coming nothing close to the Oklahoma Thunder, is it? What's it what are they call The Thunder. Tulsa Thunder, wherever the hell they're from. Oklahoma, with Kevin Durant, and of course the Miami Heat, and even the Celtics. Uh, the, 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 the Knicks will be mediocre. They'll be mediocre. They let their big guy get away. They let their star of the future get away. And Jeremy Lin. I, I mean, at least it looks that way now. Maybe Lin won't turn out to be that great. Maybe he will injure himself, but I think he'll play great basketball, and we won't get to see it here in New York, because we've got Raymond Felton now, who, again, I don't really have anything against, but the, I, I really don't. He's probably a good, good choice, and Jason Kidd the drunk. I mean, Jason Kidd's a great ball player, but, you know, got arrested for drunk and driving, smashing his Mercedes into a, a telephone pole. I mean, who drives their Mercedes into a telephone call. Except idiots. Oh, it's a difficult world. It is. And basketball just got more difficult in New York. We're back to the dreary drudgery.